Hello and welcome to the Virtual College Fair for All Virginia Students, sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thanks for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at the same website, drivescan.com slash Virginia. Here is the order of our presentations today. We are in session A4. You can see where I'm hovering my cursor. So those will be the schools presenting. Right now, we do not have the representative from West Liberty University here, but if they show up, we will have them present probably at the end of our session. All right, that is all of the housekeeping stuff. So I will step out of the way and turn it over to our first presentation from the Pennsylvania College of Technology. Thank you, Russ. I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll get going here. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Patrick Butler and I'm uh, the admissions counselor for international and emerging markets at Pennsylvania College of Technology. Uh, so a little bit about our school. Uh, we are all about building a future by hand. Um, as you'll see, just even on our title slide here, there's all of these images of students doing things with their hands. And that's what we're all about. Uh, in, our, in your first semester, in whatever program you decide to pursue, um, you're going to be in the labs working with your hands on equipment. Uh, we believe that that's a really crucial part of you being successful, not only at your time in college, but really at your time after college when you get into that first um, or, or second job even. We are a public institution of about 5,000 students, and we are considered a special mission affiliate of Penn State University. But we are um, our own institution. So uh, when you graduate from us, while it will mention Penn State, you were getting that degree from Pennsylvania College of Technology. We have over 100 different majors. Um, and these majors are spanning uh, real industry focused areas. And what I mean by that is we have industry advisory boards that are forming us on our curriculum, um, as well as which degrees we should even offer um, to make sure that they're applicable in today's marketplace. That really helps drive our 98% job placement rate. Um, so what that number really translates to is that our students are getting jobs as soon as they graduate. Um, they are being very successful and having a real impact on, on the world. Part of what's also driving that is the over 150 learning labs that we have on campus. These labs are outfitted with state-of-the-art equipment, the same equipment, software, and technology that you would find out in the real-world setting. We believe learning on the exact same production size and scale equipment is important so that you're familiar with how things work in the field and more importantly, how they break so that you're able to fix it and work in those different, uh, different scenarios. And finally, we keep our class sizes relatively small, about 16 students in a class. Uh, and that's really important so that you get a lot of face time with the faculty as well as uh, interaction with each other in the different lab environments. So in these labs, you're going to again have access to the latest technology. Uh, this slide gives you a little overview of some of our different labs that we have, our dental hygiene clinic, our construction labs, our aviation center, our culinary arts technology labs, as well as our brewing and fermentation science lab. That's just a real small sampling of all the great facilities that we have on campus. As I mentioned, we have 100 majors. Uh, and these are spread across three academic schools. In the School of Business Arts and Sciences, you're going to find things like business administration and accounting, graphic design and emergency management and homeland security, as well as, of course, culinary arts technology. Engineering technologies, by far our largest academic school on, on campus, that's where you're going to find all of the construction programs, our automotive technology programs, everything information technology like cybersecurity and game and simulation design, as well as software development, robotics and mechatronics and diesel technology as well. And finally, in our School of Nursing and Health Sciences, that's where you're going to find all things health. Our programs like nursing, physician assistant studies, surgical technology, dental hygiene, all live in the nursing and health sciences school. We offer associate degrees, certificate programs, bachelor's degrees, and master's degrees across these three academic schools. 
Penn College does also offer the traditional college experience. We have on-campus housing, as well as over 65 student organizations. So there's really something for everyone to get involved in. I'll also mention that we have NCAA Division III athletics with 16 intercollegiate sports and a whole host of intramural and club activities for you to get involved in. Our alumni have gone on to do some pretty amazing things, working at some of the biggest name companies out there like Google and Amazon, as well as even making appearances on channels like the Food Network, like our CHOP champion, Christine here. So we really are proud of our alumni and what they've done uh, out in the world. So how can you become one of our featured alumni? Well, you have to complete the three-step admissions process. Our application is free and we do participate in the Common App. You can apply online using our institutional application if you're a transfer student, or you can fill out the Common App as a new student. No cost to you either one. There's no minimum GPA, there's no essay, and there's no letters of recommendation, and we're a test optional school. After you apply, you submit your transcripts to us, and then finally you have to meet placement requirements, which means that we assess your English and math levels through a simple placement test. After you complete those three steps, we'll welcome you as a new Penn College Wildcat. We invite you to visit our campus. We are open for tours, both virtually and in person. So check out pct.edu slash visit for all the ways that you can visit our campus. It's really a seeing is believing kind of a campus. Um, so I invite you to really come out and check us out. I wanna thank you for your time and attention today and invite you to submit any questions that you may have through the Q&A feature. Patrick, thank you very much. And I will reiterate what Patrick just said about submitting questions in the Q&A. And if your question is for a specific school, please name the school in your question. And if it's a general question, obviously you don't need to do that. But here we are with uh, the order of our presentations in this session. Again, we're going to skip West Liberty University right now as we do not have a representative yet, but uh, we'll come back to them. So instead we will now hear from the representative from St. John's University. Hello, everyone. My name is Christine Perrault from St. John's um, in New York City. Let me just start sharing my screen. Um, here we go. And I'll start my slideshow presentation uh, from the beginning. So um, when you hear New York City, most people think of mid Manhattan in the middle of the city and open campus. This picture right here is from taken from our Queens campus. It is a traditional campus 11 miles east of Manhattan. Um, as freshmen, students can choose to um, apply to two different campuses. We have the Staten Island campus and the Queens campus. The difference between the two is size. Staten Island has um, sits on 11 acres, has about 1,500 students and about 200 and 250 freshmen starting each year. Whereas the Queens campus sits on 100 acres, um, has about 15,000 undergraduate students, 3,000 freshmen. Um, it's a suburban urban campus. It's for students who are looking to be in the city but have a traditional campus environment. So um, it's the best of both worlds. We do have a Manhattan campus, but that's primarily for upper level business students, actuarial science and risk management. Majors, over a hundred ranging from accounting to undecided, undecided being one of our top five majors. Students can choose from four different tracks of undecided. So if a student is thinking some, something in the sciences like biology, chemistry, toxicology, biomedical sciences, they can choose BS undecided. If you're thinking business, but not sure what business major, because we do offer something like um, management, finance, risk management, um, accounting, economics, but you're really not sure which direction, you could pick BS undecided in that. We have a College of Professional Studies that has majors such as Sport Management, Legal Studies, Criminal Justice, Computer Science, Homeland Security, Communications. You could choose BS Undecided. And if you have no idea whatsoever, you could just choose BA Undecided. Students are able to transfer from one major to another. Um, even though we are medium sized, we're able to maintain an average class of 25. So you're not having these huge lecture halls where you're taking attendance with a clicker or asking questions with a microphone. 
Um, the average test score of students getting accepted is about a 1200 and the average GPA is a 3.5, but we are test optional. We have been for the past five years, not only for admission, but also scholarship purposes. St. John's, even though we are Catholic, we are one of the most diverse universities in the country. So we're diverse, not only in religion and color and culture and socioeconomic status, you could physically see that diversity on campus. We want our students to be global citizens we encourage all our students to study abroad. Last year, we had close to 44% of our undergraduate students do a form of study abroad. Now we have our own campus in Rome and our own campus in Paris, but students are not only limited to those two campuses. But however, the most popular programs that students choose to do is called the Western, um, Western Europe Semester Abroad, where you would spend five weeks in our Paris campus and take two classes, five weeks in our Rome campus and take two classes, and five weeks in Ireland and take two classes. Whatever scholarships or financial aid you get would be applied to a full semester abroad. And freshmen are able to study abroad by doing a passport program where you would go to our Rome or Paris campus at the end of the semester. Now the end game is um, percent of our students six months after graduating were either employed or in grad school. The fact that we're in New York City gives you the opportunity to do internships year round. Um, you don't have to wait until the until the summer to do the internships. Um, there are certain majors that internships are required, but it is encouraged for our students to do internships. A cool internship a student had last year from Virginia, one of our Virginia students had an internship at the Jimmy Fallon show. Um, Division One sports, um, Big East, we are known for our basketball team. Half our home basketball games are played in Madison Square Garden, but last year we were number two in the country at a point in soccer, top 10 in fencing, and top 20 in baseball. We also offer intramurals as well as um, um, club sports. Again, I talked about how diverse we are. Our organization reflects that. Um, we encourage all our students to be involved, to become involved. Um, the earlier, the better. It helps with the transition from high school to college. It enriches you as a person, but it can also enrich your pockets. So if you play an instrument and are in our pep band, you get money towards your tuition. If you're a student ambassador, student leader, student orientation leader, there is some form of compensation for students. But we do also have sororities and camp um, sororities and fraternities on campus. Speaking on campus, when I went to college, everyone shared a bathroom. It was cinder block walls, but our residence halls are fairly new. What we call traditional is two rooms connected by bathroom or suite style living. Um, freshmen can pick their rooming as well as their room type, and um, it is guaranteed your freshman year. Now you're ready to apply. It is free to apply. We are part of the Common app. Um, early action is December 1st, which is non-binding and students will get notified by January 15th. Again, we are test optional. So students who um, feel that those test scores do not reflect who you are as a student, I would highly suggest that you do not submit them to be considered for admission. But if you still do submit them, we will take whatever is higher when it comes down to academic scholarships. Now we do offer academic scholarships at the time of decision. We also are Army ROTC. We we do give scholarships for students whose parents are police officers, firefighters, um, currently or retired. And we have scholarships based on religion and service. Definitely check out our financial aid page for a listing of those scholarships. Now you want to know more, here's some information. I am the rep that reads applications for um, Virginia. If you do attend, I do suggest that you attend one of our virtual open houses. Well, we have one left on November 22nd. Students who participate in that will also get an extra $500 engagement grant. So that's $500 just for attending one of our virtual open houses. But take care, hope to hear from you if you have any questions and stay healthy and have a great day. Christine, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Again, I want to reiterate, as I've been saying, that if you have a question, use the Q&A button to ask it of any of our uh, presenters today. And if it's for a specific school, just make sure that you name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from the University of Richmond. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen really fast. 
Okay, so thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Lauren Bennett and I am an assistant director in the Office of Admission at the University of Richmond. The University of Richmond is located in Richmond, Virginia, so we might not be too far from wherever you are tuning in. We are technically in the suburbs of Richmond, so we're about six miles from downtown Richmond. We have shuttles and buses that take students um, to downtown Richmond because there is so much to do in the city. We have over 900 restaurants, seven Fortune 500 companies, and a lot of museums, festivals. We're located on the river, um, so we love to take advantage of being in the city of Richmond. We also say we're about a day trip away from anything you could want to do, two hours from DC, from the Blue Ridge Mountains, along with Virginia Beach. So to give you a quick overview of the University of Richmond, we are a private liberal arts institution of about 3,000 undergraduate students. Our average class size is around 17 students with 99% of our classes having 30 students or fewer. We have a lot of faculty to teach you along your way. We have an eight to one student to faculty ratio. So you're never gonna be one of 250 in a lecture style hall where a professor doesn't know your name. Most likely your professor will be your advisor, your mentor, you'll grab lunch with them, they'll write recommendation letters for you, or even help you find an internship or help with research. Around 70% of our students will conduct research before they graduate. Um, and since we are predominantly an undergraduate campus, you are getting graduate level research as an undergraduate student. So when our faculty are looking for students to help out, they're pulling from our undergraduate students. Something very unique about the University of Richmond is our Richmond Guarantee. It's $4,000 in funding that is guaranteed to every undergraduate student to fund a research project, project or an unpaid or underpaid internship. So we will pay you up to $10 an hour. Say you get an internship that pays $7.25. We'll subsidize it up to $10 an hour, 40 hours a week for 10 weeks over the summer. So we know you're gonna get a great education. We wanna make sure that you're able to get those experiences outside the classroom as well for your resume. Now I mentioned we are a liberal arts institution which means when you apply to Richmond, you are just applying to the University of Richmond. You are not applying into a major or into a particular school. We do have three undergraduate schools. Our School of Arts and Sciences, which houses majority of our students um, because it houses majority of our majors and minors. And it's also where you will come in when you're technically undeclared as a freshman student. Um, and then your sophomore year, when you declare your major, you can declare it in the School of Arts and Sciences in our Robin School of Business or apply to be in our Leadership Studies School. The Leadership Studies School is something very unique to Richmond. Um, we actually had the first Leadership Studies School in the nation, so it's something we are very proud of and would encourage you to check out more information on our website. Um, but it's kind of built into our curriculum that you could double major if that's something you're interested in. About two thirds of our students have more than a major. So whether that's a double major, a major and a minor, and you can do that across the schools as well and still graduate in your four years. Study abroad is something very important to us. Um, if our students are interested, we will find a program and a way to get you abroad no matter what you're involved with, whether you're on the pre-health track, a double major, an accounting major, individual in sports, whatever it might be, if you wanna go abroad, we'll find a program that fits your needs. About 67% of our students will go abroad during their time at Richmond, whether it's for a summer, a semester, a year, some classes even contain abroad components. And we um, provide a $1,000 stipend to every student going abroad. You get to decide what you want to use that for. Do you want to pay for your airfare? Do you want to pay to take a train to Spain for the weekend while you're abroad, a fancy dinner, go to a museum? Whatever it might be, that $1,000 is for you to decide. We have over 180 clubs and organizations, which for a school of our size is an insane amount. Um, so pretty much anything you can think of, we have a club for. We don't, you can also start one. We have 17 Division I sports and 32 club sports, along with their Herald sports, so a lot of ways to get involved and remain active while on campus. Quickly switching gears to um, admission, we review applications holistically, which means when you apply to Richmond, we review a lot of aspects, not just your academics or your test scores. This year, we are test optional. It's the first time in institutional history, so if you are a senior applying to start next fall, you feel that the um, SAT or ACT does not reflect your academic ability or you weren't able to take a test, please feel free to take advantage of that test optional policy. You can apply for Richmond using the common application or coalition application. And in addition to the personal essay on the common app or coalition app, we also have a um, required Richmond question. So an additional essay that you will submit. Some of our deadlines that we have at Richmond, we have early decision, early action and regular decision. 
Our early decision, um, for our first early decision deadline is coming right up, November 1st. Um, an early decision is that binding process. So it's for students who know they want to go to Richmond. It's their number one choice. If they get in, they're committed to coming to Richmond. We also have early action, which is a non-binding, non-restrictive application plan. Um, and you find out mid-January, but you don't have to decide until May 1. So you have a ton of time to really weigh your options, see what your financial aid package looks like before deciding and committing to coming to Richmond. Talking about aid, we have need-based aid and merit-based aid at Richmond. We meet 100% of demonstrated need for our students while also being 100% need blind in the admission process. Quickly to cover something for um, our Virginia residents, if your family makes $60,000 or less, you are then eligible for a full tuition room and board um, financial aid scholarship to Richmond. So if you have questions about Richmond's promise to Virginia, please feel free to reach out. It's a very unique opportunity for our Virginia residents. We also have a few merit-based aid scholarships. We have Richmond Scholars, which if you apply by December 1st, you are automatically considered for this. It is a full tuition room and board scholarship for about 25 students, along with our presidential scholars. Um, all students that apply to Richmond are considered for that, and that's for 75 students, and it's equivalent to a third of tuition. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly. My name is Lauren Bennett again, um, and I represent majority of Virginia, so I'm a great resource for you, and thanks so much for tuning in. Lauren, thank you very much. And again, I will reiterate, if you have questions for any of our presenters today, please make sure to use the Q&A button. If it's for a specific school, please name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from the American University of Paris. Bonjour everyone, my name is Julie Sappington. I am the representative for the American University of Paris. I'm just sharing my screen here. Um, as you can see, we are located in Paris, France. That's often a question we get. It is in the title, so very much so. Um, we are what our title is. We are an American liberal arts university like you find in the United States, just located in Paris. Uh, our website's there on your page, aup.edu. You can always check us out there. And then I'm just going to direct you to our Instagram. That's at AUP Admissions. Uh, that's our handle. It's a really great place to get a firsthand view of what it's like to be a student at AUP because we often have student takeovers. And so you can, they have asked me any things in the stories and it's a great way to get a sense of AUP. Of course, I'll give you some details here as well. Okay, so like I mentioned, AUP is a private urban liberal arts university and we're located in the very heart of Paris, France. So uh, we are in the seventh arrondissement, which is neighborhood in French, which is where the Eiffel Tower is located. So even if you've not been to Paris before, you're probably, probably at least familiar with the Eiffel Tower and that's in our neighborhood. As I mentioned, we are an urban campus and what that means is that, um, you know, between classes, you're gonna be walking past the typical street scene of Paris. Uh, it's not like a campus that's enclosed and away from the city. You are at the heart of the city. And we do try to take advantage of that as much as possible in the classroom. We are a small school at 1,100 students, and but our students are from 100 different nations around the world. So that makes us a very internationally diverse group of students. About half of our students come from the United States. 15% come from France itself. Another 15% come from the European nations around us, and then the rest are from all over the world. So no matter what major you're taking, you're going to have just a variety of um, conversations in the classroom. There are going to be so many different perspectives that are represented by the, the different viewpoints from all around the world, no matter the topic. Um, so that comes to the small class size that I wanted to talk a little bit about. Being that we are a small university, we also have a small class size of um, typically you're going to have about 17 students in a class and maybe 10 different nationalities represented in that student class. Okay, just a little bit more about the uh, academic side of things. Our classes are in English, so you don't have to come with any sort of level of French um, to attend AUP. If you do not speak French already, that's okay. If you know bonjour and that's it, that's fine. You can come with uh, no level of French necessary. It's just that while you're with us, you would take some French language courses as a part of the curriculum if you don't speak it already. 
Um, so we have 26 different majors, 39 different minors. Uh, we are a liberal arts school that tends a little bit more towards the humanities and social sciences with our offerings. Largest majors are international business, global communications, and then that's followed by international and comparative politics and psychology. That being said, we also have an art history major that is phenomenal. It takes advantage of all the wonderful museums that are right there in our neighborhood, the Louvre, the Musée d'Orsay, the Rodin, any of those great museums. You're gonna be looking at the art right there in front of you as a part of those classes. We have history law and society. If you're looking for like an informal pre-law major, um, we have computer science, we have environmental studies and quantitative environmental science. So there's a wide range of offerings there. Along with academics, our students embark on study trips where they travel all over the world with their professors and classmates. So again, that's us taking advantage of where we're located for the classroom. So some of these trips include, you're gonna see on this slide, we, our students have gone on a marketing trip to Iceland. There have been trips to Israel where they've studied social justice, law, and human rights. There's a sustainable development trip that go, take, goes to India every year. We have trips to Sweden to study sustainability, uh, politics in Belgians and Brussels, and art history in Italy as well. It's not just Paris, it turns out. Um, our students also take, our film students go to the Rotterdam Film Festival in Netherlands as well. Our 20,000 alumni are in 145 different countries around the world working for companies like Chanel, Google, and the United Nations. So we have a very vast alumni network, given that they're all over the world. Um, as it is an American bachelor's degree that you earn from AUP, it is widely accepted throughout the world. Um, we are in the Common App. If you're applying to other schools via the Common App, you can always add us there. These are some of our classroom buildings, just to give you a sense of what it looks like. We have clubs, we have sports, we, have, we take advantage of all the different um, things you can do in Paris, such as you know, community service clubs and different sports teams and all of that. So uh, we'd love to have you come join us at AUP. And if you want to get more information than just a short little clip, like I said, go to aup.edu to learn more about our majors and our academics, but also see us on Instagram at AUP admissions so that you can see what it's really like to be a student in Paris, one of the best cities on earth. Merci et passe une belle journée. Thank you, Julie. I will not attempt to speak French as I've been outlawed from doing that in half of the United States. So up next, we will, again, I will remind you, if you have a question for anyone, please use the Q&A button. And if it's for a specific school, name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from the University of Missouri. Made. Jordan, oh. we're seeing we're we're seeing your notes as well. I I know. Unfortunately, I got a new computer and I don't know how to make that stop. Okay. Well, no problem. <laughs> um. All right. Ah. Okay. Got it. Got it going now. All right. Uh, my name is Jordan. I'm with the University of Missouri, or most commonly referred to as Mizzou. Um, we are a large campus. We have about 30,000 students on campus, 24,000 of those being undergraduates, the rest graduate and doctorate students. We are one of six public universities to house a medical school, law school, and veterinary school all on one campus. So we do have a lot going on. Uh, we do have tigers from all 50 states and over 120 countries. Uh, so there are a lot of different types of students that are joining us here in Columbia, Missouri. Columbia, Missouri, or Como for short, is where we are located. If you don't know anything about the state of Missouri, um, we are smack dab in the middle of the state, about an hour and a half from St. Louis and Kansas City are on either side of us. So um, we are not a major city, but we are a big college town. Uh, we do have a little over under 117,000 people living in Columbia, so there is a lot going on, uh, plus our 30,000 college students as well. So there's tons of festivals, lots of restaurants, um, lots of uh, live music venues. If you're into outdoors activities, tons of places for hiking, biking, uh, camping, anything you could be interested in there as well. 
My favorite thing about downtown Columbia is the fact that it's right across the street from our campus. So if you're on our quad and you're looking to go into the downtown area, all you have to do is walk across the street. Um, that really helps connect our campus community with our Columbia community as well. We do have over 300 academic programs on campus, so a lot to choose from for you. Those are housed in 13 different schools and colleges. Uh, you do not have to know what you want to major in. We do also offer a Discover program for those undecided students to try to help them um, figure out what it is they might want to study. Uh, but we do have some larger programs here. Some of our more popular programs are going to be our College of Engineering, um, our School of Health Professions, our College of Business, our School of Nursing, and um, our School of Journalism. We are home to the world's first and oldest school of journalism. So if that's something of interest to you, Missouri should definitely be on your list. Uh, what we like to utilize here is something we've coined as the Missouri method. It is learning by doing. We want our students to come to campus and not only uh, obtain a college degree, but also a resume. And we want you to be out there and actively hands-on participating in whatever area you are interested in, whether that's through practicums, internships, or extracurricular activities. This year, we boasted our highest retention rate ever at 90%. So we think that means students are very happy here at Mizzou and they're wanting to come back um, after their freshman year. And right now we have a 92.7% successful career outcomes rate, which means uh, students are graduating from Mizzou, obtaining a job, or going into graduate school within six months of graduation. So again, another very successful rate um, for us here. Fun fact for you all, we are home of the original homecoming. Um, so if you enjoy celebrating homecoming at your high school, you'll definitely enjoy our month-long celebration here on campus. Tons of fun events, um, blood drive, canned food drive, parade, all culminating in our homecoming football game. Uh, we are in the SEC, which is one of the best, if not the best uh, college uh, sports conference. And we do have 20 different NCAA sports here on campus. So that adds a lot to our school spirit and camaraderie here. Um, it's very fun, nothing beats an SEC game day. For our students applying to Mizzou, we have two application processes. Um, so our traditional process, you're going to submit an application through either our university um, specific app or the common application. We'll need your official high school transcripts and your test scores sent directly from ACT or College Board if you have those. We know this year is weird as well, so we are offering a test optional policy for our students. So if you would like to apply without a test score, We'll still, still need that application, those official high school transcripts, but we'll also need a personal statement or and a resume from you for our test optional process. We do have a number of automatic merit-based scholarships for our students. So whether you're applying with a test score or without, we will automatically consider you for all of those merit-based scholarships. You don't have to worry about applying separately for any of those. And something I always like to talk to our, our out-of-state students about is our residency program. Missouri is the easiest state to gain residency in, so we do allow our out-of-state students to come to Mizzou, live on campus in a freshman dorm, and establish residency during their freshman year. Once you establish residency during that first year, you'll become a Missouri resident, and then you'll be able to pay uh, in-state tuition, which is about a $17,000 difference a year. So it's a really phenomenal program that really can only be found in the state of Missouri. We definitely want our out-of-state students to take advantage of that. Like I said, my name is Jordan. I'm the regional admissions representative here in Virginia. So I do live in Virginia. Um, my email is super simple. Just ask Jordan at Missouri.edu. We are offering on-campus visits. Um, so if you wanna come out to Missouri, you're more than welcome, but we do have a lot of different virtual um, visit options for you as well. We're offering overview sessions every day virtually, academic appointments virtually, one-on-one -on -one sessions virtually, and of course our virtual campus tours um, live with our tour guides as well. So we have a, a lot of options for you to still um, be able to visit us even during this crazy time. But I thank you for listening to me today um, and go Tigers. Jordan, thank you very much. And I'm going to share the our schedule slide even though we have heard all of our pre presentations from each of our representatives today. Again, West Liberty University was not able to make it into the session, but from the other five schools. But during this time, while I'm sharing the schedule slide, I would like to ask each of our representatives to come back on camera and unmute their microphone so we can do a quick little Q&A for 
not only our attendees right now who are live, but also um, who will access this video later when it's available. Um, do a little value added stuff here and um, I'll play radio or TV talk show host here and ask you some questions. But the first, and we'll answer in the, the reason I was sharing the schedule, I'll do it again, just real quick to remind everyone. So we'll go in the same order that you presented, just a round robin asking or answering this, these different questions. And the first question I have is a real simple one. Basically, your, what is your favorite campus or school tradition? That's, what's, your, what's your favorite at your particular school? And again, we will start with the uh, Pennsylvania College of Technology. So uh, our college is located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is actually the home of Little League Baseball. So every year in August, um, the Little League World Series comes to our town, and uh, we're very actively involved in, uh, in hosting some events on campus and welcoming people from literally all over the world to our little town, which is a really exciting thing. And it coincides with the uh, start of classes and the first few days the students move in, which is really exciting. Awesome. Uh, next up, uh, St. John's. I think you're still muted, Christine. So sorry, so That's sorry. Fine. We have a winter carnival week every year and we have our own tree lighting ceremony we have our own mini Rockefeller Center that uh, Rockefeller tree lighting ceremony that ends with fireworks so, my favorite thing fantastic uh University of Richmond yes hopefully you can hear me sorry my neighbors are conveniently having a tree taken out right now um <laughs> the joys of working from home um but my favorite tradition that we have every year is our candlelight ceremony so we have a lake on our campus um, and there's a gazebo and a bridge that crosses the lake and so the night before graduation all graduating uh students in our undergrad law school mba they will line the lake around and light their candles um so it's just a great way to show the community and really come together um, before they graduate and go off to do great things in the world. Um, it's always so much fun to watch and see. Sounds good. Universe, or the American University of Paris. Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's an American treat and we are in Paris and being that we are an American university in Paris and all we, you know, a big part of the focus is, you know, that focus on all the cultural exchange that happens. And so this is a cultural exchange for all of our non-US students to come. They're always very excited to come and see what it's all about. Um, so Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving feast takes place in the American Church of Paris, which is down the street from us. And it's a wonderful time where, again, it's that cultural exchange. We have lots of, of cultural exchange things like a world's fair, but this, is, this one's very special to me. Fantastic. And it's hard to believe Thanksgiving is like about a month away. So, uh, and uh, University of Missouri. So one of my favorite traditions um, on our campus is going to be our Tiger Walk. Uh, it is, starts as a freshman. Um, the day before you start classes, all of our freshmen line up on our quad, um, led by our marching band. They all kind of run towards our big Jesse Hall, um, which is our iconic building, kind of signifying their entrance into Mizzou. And we greet them with an ice cream party. Um, we give them what's called Tiger Stripe ice cream. It is a vanilla ice cream with a Godiva chocolate ribbon that we make here on our campus. Um, and then when students are about to graduate, they line up on the other side of the quad, they run away from the campus, and we greet them with an adult beverage on that side. So it's a very fun tradition for our students. Sounds like it. Uh, we have about five more minutes, so I think I'll ask another question. We'll just go again in the same order. And this one, more pragmatic to uh, students who are doing their college search to probably waist deep in it right now, if not higher, which is what's the one piece of advice you would give? What's the one thing people sh uh, should remember during this process? And Patrick, we'll start with you from the uh, Pennsylvania Co College of Technology. Yeah, if at all possible, visit the campus. Um, I know that's a hard thing to do in uh, these times, but even if you can't get there in person, visit virtually and engage with the college. Um, it's really important that you find a school that you feel at home. Um, and while that can be hard to do remotely, I think a lot of schools have gone to great lengths to put a lot of virtual opportunities even for you to try and find that right fit. So that's my biggest piece of advice is to visit the campus if you can in person, tour, ask those questions, those hard questions, 
Um, and if you can't get there in person, visit uh, virtually with the school. Okay, good advice. Christine from uh, St. John's University. You're so there yeah, you go. each school is different. So just um, so you'll hear a lot, it depends. So just because one school has a diff has a, a policy, let's say test optional, or even within test optional, each school has probably a different policy on that. So you should do research for each different school because what you hear from one school might not necessarily be the case for another school. University of Richmond. Sure. So yes, kind of going off of that, um, I was going to say, make sure to do your research because we all do have a lot of different deadlines. Um, but for this year specifically on the, if the school's using the common application or coalition application, just want to note that there is a COVID question. So if your family has undergone anything that was um, of significance due to COVID, if you have anything that you want to let your admission counselors know, um, please feel free to use that box because we will read those things and we want to take those things into account account. So if, you know, transitioning to school virtually was really hard for you, maybe you had a dip in grades or you had to pick up a part-time job to help your family. Um, let us know those things. We're people too. So we read your applications. We know this has been a tough year. So feel free to take advantage of that, um, that section on the Common App or Coalition application. There, I did it. I was muted. <laughs> Next up, the American University of Paris. Thank you. Um, I want to just Second, what Lauren just said about we are humans reading your application. So insert as much of yourself into the application because we want to get to know who you are. But that's not what I was going to say for my piece of advice. Uh, my piece of advice is to keep an open mind. Um, you know, like it's it's easy to get caught up in the same five or six schools, but it's really nice to kind of expand your boundaries and look to see what else is out there. There might be something just totally different. Just saying. <laughs> And finally, the University of Missouri. Um, going off of what some of my colleagues said, um, with every school being so different, I think it's a great opportunity for you to um, put together a spreadsheet or a calendar or a timeline, um, because every school is going to have different application deadlines. They're going to be on different types of applications. Um, so being able to get yourself organized and have that um, Excel spreadsheet and that timeline um, right there at your fingertips is going to set you up for success um, as you're in the middle of this application process. Excellent. Well, I want to thank all of you for uh, doing a little bit extra and answering my questions as well as uh, sharing your presentations today. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for today's presentation. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. Uh, please uh, make sure to sign up for others where you signed up for this one at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And this presentation was recorded and you'll be able to find the sessions recording in about a week, as well as all of the other session recordings, once again, at strivescan.com slash Virginia. One more time, I want to thank each of our representatives for presenting today, and I want to thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. <laughs>